floss tube welcome back this is the garden goose stitcher floss tube my name is Teresa I come here to talk about my stitching and my geese in my garden never in the right order <laughs> this is floss tube 23 and it's the end of June it's almost July I cannot believe how quickly summer always goes by it makes me melancholy really <laughs> kind of I'm going to spend all winter waiting to get to the shortest day so I can look forward to the longest day and then it's already gone. Yeah. But um, things have been busy around here. Esmeralda is doing wonderful. We do call her Ezzy. She is not uh, big. In, she's not small enough to bring into the camera, <laughs> into the house. She's almost as big as her parents. Um, she's doing really well, but she's entered that terrible teenage era where she doesn't follow us around we have to like usher her where we want her to go she wants to go here she wants to go there but she's <laughs> it's sad but everybody does it all of them do it um <clears throat> she's still by herself right now oddly enough after we did our chicken coop we had moved well we had mm, I don't know whenever when the girl when the girls were done sitting on their clutches in the chicken coop we moved them back to the goose yard and um they had only been in there for the winter but we should have moved them early enough where they could have their clutch in their goose coop but um so at, they had stopped laying on their nests but then once we moved them they started laying new clutches and they're they're currently laying on them i have no idea what's going to happen so our gander is super protective of the girls. I won't even, I won't go in the yard because he's, he hisses at me. Um, he doesn't want anybody to come near the girls cause he's protecting them. So when we put Esmeralda in, he's, he's not having it. He acts like he could be mean to her. I don't think he would because she's like right next to their yard and she's, and she, he sits as close to the fence as he can get to her. So I think that's very interesting. So I don't know. I have a feeling after they're done sitting on their, whatever they're sitting on, we don't know. Uh, we'll go in, we'll put her in there and we'll work on that integration. We did bring a new furry friend home, family member home. We bought, we brought a puppy home. Uh, her name is <laughs> Ellie. Her name is Ellie. Did you think I froze? Because I did. I just... <laughs> was talking about Ezzy and then I needed to talk about Allie. Uh, we got a puppy from a, another hobby farm. They like listed them and she's not a purebred or anything. She's a mix between a Gordon, uh, a German short hair pointer and a, and a Brittany Spaniel. So as much as I have a soft spot in my heart for Springer Spaniels, I didn't want another one <laughs> because she was so much energy the entire her entire life so um but so we brought home the the puppy ellie a couple weeks a few weeks ago right after we spoke she's been doing well she's pretty naughty <laughs> she's in the let me bite your face phase you know she's just gnawing on stuff um so we've had to pick up all the rugs the house is in in chaos there's constantly Piddle messes. It's awful. I don't do well with this stage. She's, I feel like she's coming out of it though. She's sleeping through the night and so she's doing well now, but so that's all the, oh, the garden's been watered by the Lord above. So I've had my mornings to stitch and drink hot coffee without any garden debris in it because I don't have to go straight out and water for an hour. Heavenly, heavenly praise the Lord that the rain has come here now we're a little concerned because there's a lot of rain in the forecast but um the garden has really loved it <laughs> i love how you're worried you're worried you're worried and then you get a couple good days of rain and everything just whoo, goes nuts so by the time it all comes down i'm going to go out there and i'm going to have bugs that i need to pick off so i i just saw some japanese beetles on my roses and i thought oh boy i better go out and check on my green beans but I'll do that soon when there's a break. Today was misting all day. And we have a lot of smoke, so. Uh, that's all the farm and the, and the animals updates. I have been stitching. And I'm going to tell you, <laughs> honestly, that I tried to record this floss tube several times. Uh, I was, 
and I just can't figure out how to express what I want to express. So I'm just like, I think I'm just not gonna. <laughs> I went to a petite retreat hosted by a friend in Ohio. It was between the weekends of SitchCon. And so Kathy and Missy from Two Needles Pulling Thread came out to Ohio early. They're going to talk about it in their, their floss tube coming up. And Kia B had come in to, to have a meeting and see people. And so I was invited to come down or go down to Ohio. First, I was invited to, to meet them at Craft Gallery. And I said, yes, I'll meet you at Craft Gallery. And then, um, and then they were like, and do you think you might want to come for a day? And I was like, maybe one, day. you know, and then I went, I went from Saturday and then I left on Wednesday. So it was a nice long stretch. <clears throat> and Holly was an amazing hostess. She has a wonderful home and she was extremely thoughtful. <sighs> Every aspect of our stay was comfortable and welcoming. And, um, you know, I don't, I'm a sleepwalker. <laughs> so I've had conversations with a lot of people and I probably have talked about it here that I'm not a great roommate. So, um, part of when I retreat is that I have to have my own, like my own room or whatever. So I wasn't anxious about going or anything. I was very comfortable there. I don't think I slept walk. Nobody said anything. <laughs> I locked my door, <laughs> but every single day, Holly had something special for us planned. And she had been going through a lot right before this petite retreat. And so I had like zero expectations from her really. And I, and I was completely overwhelmed with how, how much she had planned while she was in the midst of all that chaos as well. And so every single day there was a sweet surprise, so well thought out, personalized surprise for us. And Kia B talked about the retreat a little bit on her floss tube. I'm sure that the, the girls from Maine, Missy and Kathy will talk about it. But every single day, Holly and Tani gave us a prize. I love that they call gifts prizes. I just, <laughs> I don't know why. But um, something so thoughtful that uh, it really has me unable to explain how it, it makes me feel. Because I don't like a lot of, um, I <laughs> I'm not great at expressing my feelings, but I feel overwhelmed with the love and the thoughtfulness and the care that was put into this retreat from not only our hostess, but also each, each person who brought, you know, like gifts or thoughtful mementos and the time was well spent. We learned a bunch. We, <laughs> Holly had us learn how to dye silks. She had Shelly Fry came in. She had a personalized chart made for us from Sweet Wing Studio. Every single part of this wonderful little getaway was amazing, amazing. So I just have to say that somehow I met these girls in a parking lot and then a year later, I just, if I have an issue, I know who I can go to, to ask for perspective or for prayers or um, to express my concerns about something. It's really an interesting scenario that brought everybody together, but it was so wonderful. And I have a hard time talking about it. And I've deleted the floss I made several times because I don't, I don't really think I need to express it in words. I just, I don't know. So basically what I was saying is I went to Ohio for a few days and I got a lot of cool gifts from Stitchy Friends and, um, and I learned some new things and I did some shopping. So that's what's been going on here. And um, I don't really, I don't know how to walk the line between look at how amazing my these friends of mine are. And then also just, I want to encourage you to take a leap of faith sometimes when you meet somebody and, um, I don't know. So I'm going to show you, I've been stitching and I'm going to show you a little bit of the stitchy kindness from our petite, the, pe the petite retreat. It's a lot though. And I don't, I don't know. So I'm going to start with my stitching because I have been stitching. Now, if you remember last time we spoke, I had 46 whips, 46. 
and I had a sinking suspicion that I prefer monogamous stitching over bouncing around between projects, especially during the week. I started a Facebook page for Wordplay Wednesday, but I've been skipping it because I don't want to do Wordplay on Wednesday. It'll interrupt my <laughs> my rhythm. So, oops. I found that I really love having a long stretch of time to stitch on stuff. So, that, along with counting my whips uh, a couple of months ago, has really motivated me to stitch as many little whips as I can. I feel like I'm snowballing. I'm just like when we did our Dave Ramsey debt journey, we snowball that momentum into a lot of progress and it, you know, it's all good. And that once you get that feeling, then you just like the motivation is there, you know? So, um, I'm gonna start with my new starts at the retreat, uh, the petite retreat. Um, there had been a plan to start Emily Call's Words to Live By. And I did not print out the cover, which is typical for me. So um, we started this on Sunday. I had got there on Saturday, late Saturday evening, like dinner time. The main girls had come in a little bit earlier. So we had dinner and then we stitched for a while, exchanged gifts. And then Kia came over the next day. She had been um, with Liz Matthews hanging out and doing stuff and so then um so Sunday we started we all started this and I did mine on a dark fabric <laughs> can you believe it I was what I was looking at her pet the pattern and it's beautiful but then I was like what if I swapped it and did a dark blue with white instead of so this is great notes Michelle it is a 16 count this um pattern has three pat three individual little pillows I am only counting this as one whip. I did it. Um, if someday if I want to go back and stitch the other ones, I will. They're, they're really quick. I started this on Sunday with everyone. I think it was late Sunday. And I finished it on Monday. So it was a nice stitch. And I love the... Oh, I stopped at Riverview on my way down to Ohio. Why didn't anybody tell me I needed to hurry down there? Ugh. So I bought Cosmo thread as I stopped there. I was going to get some white and I thought, well, I don't want to use DMC. I don't love the coverage of white DMC ever. Somebody had said, probably it was Missy, told me you should try Cosmo. And so I did. And I love it. It's still 100. And at, at <clears throat> Riverview, she showed me all the different versions of white. It was a wonderful little lesson. She had a lot of Cosmo. I had never seen a... I don't think I'd ever seen it in real life. And you know, I'm a real life shopper. I, like I can do some damage on the internet, but if I see it in real life, I'm probably collecting like a squirrel. <laughs> the other new start I had was this very wonderful surprise that Holly had commissioned a pattern from Sweet Wing Studio, Susan at Sweet Wing Studio. Everyone got to meet her at SitchCon. I'm super jealous because <laughs> I love Sweet Wing. And she had messaged her and asked if she could commission something. Susan did it. And I think it'll be available soon. I don't. And, um, so we, I started that, I think, I think on Tuesday. It's called the golden thread. Isn't that beyond sweet for some stitchy friends from a group chat to <laughs> a petite retreat. So. I, oh, and look at this. This is how well thought everything. So she had messaged or reached out to Chantel from 141 Design, asked if she could put the quote for the from the golden thread onto something. She made a little phone stand for each of us with the saying, super thoughtful. I think Tammy made these. Every day Tammy had a prize in a lunch bag. It was so sweet. I just love Tammy. Uh, she made a floss floss keeper thing ring floss ring floss drop ring with the the saying they had Chantel make just everything was so well thought out and this is my I started and I think on Tuesday or possibly when I got home on Wednesday I do not remember so we on Wednesday morning we drove up to craft gallery we shopped until <laughs> dropped and then we went to get lunch and I headed up and they went back down so uh, I 
finished it. Kia B, when we were at Craft Gallery, had bought us some golden metallic thread. And I chickened out in doing it for the word. But I did put it in there, and I think it looks nice, the back stitching. There's some down here. And I changed out the, the name of the quote for Petite Retreat. It's a little wonky, but you know. <laughs> it's homemade. <laughs> so... So those are my new starts, and they're finished. So whoop de whoop not adding to my whip uh, list. So when I got home, I I started to attack my whip go, and it led to my only fin fully finished object for this. This is the Tomato Time Pin Keep. It's from um, Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher <laughs> Magazine, summer of 2020. And before... When we last spoke, I had said I might not do it. <laughs> I might just stitch it in as a pillow and call it good. I ended up deciding to. I was like, what's it going to hurt? How many more How many more minutes is it going to take? And then I was so excited that I did it. I immediately found some fabric from my friend Betty. And I stitched it into a needlebook right away. And I love it so much. I had some wool. i just gone to get some at my local quilt shop. And I love it. I love it so much. I'm sure I just did all DMC. Is that what it calls for? It has a wheat dye works and a DMC conversion. So I just did DMC. And I love it. This is the first time I've made a needle book and I think it's so sweet. So I did, I finished, fully finished that. So now the rest of my whips that I have to show are all finished. Not fully finished, but they're all done. Did you hear what he said? <laughs> when we last spoke, I had 46 whips. I had two new starts. And every other whip I'm about to show you, I finished it. Can we have a moment? <laughs> before I left, I had almost finished this. I think I had finished this before I left for Ohio. I don't remember. Listen, everything was real last minute because I wasn't sure which days I was going to go. And I kind of waited towards the last to decide if I was going to go on Sunday or maybe even Monday. But I ended up, might as well. I'm glad I did. So I stitched on My Home Sweet Home by Brenda Gervais with the needle. And it's done. I did not do the snowflakes. But I did do the one over one. Hello. 728 count mushroom. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've used mushroom on all three of these. And I love it. So pretty. I think I'll make a pillow out of it just like the other two. When I went down Ohio, I took Ohio. I took um this whip. I had started this in May. Is that true? started this in May with my friend Lisa. She had seen me share this in my haul. <laughs> she said, I have that. You want to stitch one? I said, yeah. So we picked this one. And last time I had the hill, the flag, and the peoples. I still needed to do the stars and the house and that tree. So it's from Teresa Coget. What's the name of this book? Stars and Stripes? Broad Stripes and Bright Stars. So there's still a lot to go. Lisa just asked me if I want to do this one. I said, well, first I have to finish three things <laughs> before I can do anything else. <laughs> because, I'll tell you why. Uh, so then I finished it while I was down there. I think I finished this on Sunday or Monday, one of the two. No, Saturday or Sunday. I don't remember. I didn't have much to do. I had done a lot of house stuff before I left beautiful isn't it i love it and i really feel like you cannot tell the difference between the hill and the the coats which i use winnie b blue from weeks because i'd run out of the old glory or i think it was old glory and um i just think it's beautiful and i'm so glad that that's finished off the list it didn't become a long-term whip it never made it onto whip go it just got started and like four weeks later it was done <sighs> I feel like that's the type of person I might like to be. <laughs> when I got home, I started attacking whips. I did the pin cut, the pin book, the needle book. And then I pulled this whip go out. This is my second call for whip go for June. 
it's Lori Holt and it's a prim stitch series I think I had like one of these flowers and that was pretty much in the center done and it was a quick stitch didn't take me much time at all beautiful love it I have so this is the fifth one I've stitched of this series I'm going to stitch the other seven and then um <laughs> I feel overwhelmed now. Uh, <laughs> and then I'm going to eventually make them and align them. And then I'll make a little quilt out of them and hang it on the wall. Like a wall hanging with cross stitch blocks. Isn't that sweet? And then I was going through the under the bed storage looking for other whips I could possibly finish up. And this caught my eye because it's coming up. Fourth of July is coming up. May not know what day it is, but I know this is soon. <laughs> this had been a mania start in May of 2021, I believe. I believe. But so it got stitched on Mania 21, Mania 22, March Mania 23, and then one whip go call. The flag was done. Most of the sign was done. Those stocks really bothered me. I <laughs> I was whining, which isn't uncommon. <laughs> if you've been here a while, you know I tend to complain and then I just buck up and do it. <laughs> so this is my finished knee high by hands on design. I'm sure this is just coffee tea dyed 20, 14 count. It's beautiful though. I still love a coffee tea dyed fabric. I'm never going to change. You could accept me as I am. <laughs> I just think it's beautiful. Love it. And I got it done before the 4th of July. And my corn will not be knee high by the 4th of July. So then I finished that. I don't remember. But it was a Wednesday. And I thought, oh, I should pull out the, that July wit wordplay. Because I haven't touched it yet. And so I pulled out my July wordplay. I just had the people on the boat. The anchor and a couple of words. And some fish. And so I finished that. Last Wednesday, I think it only took me part of the day. I was watching Ozark. My husband wants us to finish Ozark, so I've been assigned to watch Ozark whenever I can. Uh, so I'm in season three. I think he's a couple of episodes ahead of me. I don't know. He watches at work a lot of times. I had replaced the, whale, the mermaid person with a whale. If you, whenever you see my color, I don't know what I use sometimes. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, because I keep notes on a, on a post-it that I put on the back of the pattern front cover. Uh, however, if you ever want to look at different color conversions, there's so many fun options out there. Not everybody lists what they used, but you can definitely use it as an inspiration to find floss. So for this one, I had searched hashtag July wordplay on Instagram and somebody had replaced that whale and I definitely used it and I love it. So, okay. Then I went to stitch this. This was a start in my March mania and I hated it. Mm, I picked the wrong fabric. It was too light. That bunny was a ghost. I had back stitched the bunny and it was still a ghost. So when I pulled it out to work on it the other day, I decided to restart it. I can't believe it because I usually don't restart stuff. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's not meant to be. <laughs> if I can't make it work, it's not happening. I picked a lavender fabric. I'm sure this is a Grace Notes. I don't know if you can see that it's lavender. Um, but I then the bunny didn't show up anywho. So I ended up switching the bunny to be a gray. And I still think she's adorable. I had to switch the white. I think these letters, any the, anything that's in this light pink was supposed to be white, and I just changed it out. I thought it was sweet. This is the last in the string series from Lizzie Kate that I had left to stitch, so I'm really happy that that series is done. And the last, I just finished this today. How many is that? See, this is how I keep track of my... <laughs> and I have a feeling sometimes I change my mind. <laughs> This is August wordplay. I officially have one left. I have September left. Uh, this is August wordplay. I pulled it out at last yesterday, started stitching on it a little bit. I took it to 
Nate's hockey team is doing summer conditioning camp. So two days, two nights a week, they do on ice practice. And then two days during the week, they have a midday CrossFit. I cross stitch in the car. It looks awful. <laughs> they had Bob Seeger play in the uh, last week. Boy, I just sat there and stitched away. That's probably how I got so much of that stuff done because I love Bob Seeger. Whenever I have a terrible quilting task to do, like a big, a big quilting task I need to do, probably quilting itself, I will put on the best of Bob Seeger and the Silver Bullet Band, and I can bang out any miserable task or un unfun task. I guess it's still fun, <laughs> but um, but I can I can get anything done if I'm listening to Bob Seeger. So I sat there in my car, windows open, sunroofs open. I knew every single word. <laughs> I got my stitching done. I mean, it's today I got this done in the car. Today it was raining. I had my window shut <laughs> and I listened to an audiobook. I'm listening to Ellen Hildebrian. Winter Winter in Paradise. I think that lady's husband was cheating on her. And she's going to go down to the Caribbean to find out more. But I don't know. Also, I hope I didn't ruin it for you. <laughs> if you read like the beginning chapter, you'll be like, what's he doing? So anyway, I finished this today. This was also a color conversion. I probably just copied it shamelessly from someone's Instagram feed. Please remember that imitation is a form of flattery, right? So those are my finishes. I am down to 38 whips. 38. I've been keeping a post-it stick. <laughs> Postage. Post-it. Stick <laughs> from my cupboard. But it fell down. So I had planned for myself a, like a reward new start when I hit 38. I want to start Margaret, Margaret Ferguson. And I, it's a hands across the sea sampler. Is that true? Yeah. I bought it when I was at River Riverview and I thought, okay, I'm going to start it when I get to 38. Cause then I'll have 39 whips and I'm never going above 40 whips ever again. However, then my whip go got called and it's a, it's a book. It's going to be a booger. It's going to be a bad one. I have two on there that I'm really dreading cause they're not very far and they're big and they're they seem tedious to me for some reason. I'm not sure. But my whip go. Okay. So while I've been doing all these whips clearing in between whip go and everything else, I've taken two things off of my whip go board. So I have two blank spaces and one of them was called. That's good because I'm going to need the time. <laughs> because Vintage Housewife was called by Lori Holt. And... I just feel like I was supposed to be a housewife in the 40s. I'll just tell you that. I was born in the wrong era. But I pulled this out and I knew it was bad. It's better than I thought it was. I didn't know I had the jam done or part of the next block with the typewriter and the yarn. But I, <laughs> it's a lot to go. So I'm going to stitch monogamously on this. I'm going to start it probably tonight. Uh... And I'm going to stitch on this monogamously until I can't stand it or I finish it. <laughs> the goal for my whip go is 10 days or a finish. 10 days will not finish this. It's not going to happen. But um, I can make a lot of progress in 10 days. And probably by the time I get to my 10th day, I'll be so excited because I see hope at the end that hopefully I'll keep, to, keep with it. I did pull out a whip to put into my empty slot, something easy. If I have a day to work on it, I'll be happy. If I, you know, it could finish, I could finish it in a day, maybe two, but it's this old, ye old turkey tavern. I started this at Camp Stitch a lot back in October when I was at the, re the re local retreat. Sorry, my dog is probably barking at a deer. The apples have been dropping, you know, like they drop half their fruit or anyway. So this is what where I am. I feel like I it's probably a two day stitch if I had a a length of time and some focus. So I put that onto my whip go for this month. 
So I'm hopeful. Hold on, I'm going to take a drink. <laughs> I'm going to wet my whistle. That's a lot of talking. So that is my stitching. That is, those are my plans. It was a lot, wasn't it? Can you believe I'm under 40 whips? Do you remember the dire situation I was in just a couple of months ago? I really do work well under pressure. <laughs> so, I have, I'm going to go over stitchy kindness real quick. And I don't want it to be like, uh, I'm not showing you everything. I'm just going to show you some of my favorite parts of this. The, the gifts and the thoughtfulness. And then, um, also these boogers. I'll tell you. Okay. So first, if you haven't seen Kia B's, I think she posted all of them on Instagram. You should, but she made each of us a train case, a personalized train case with a, a stitch. She had time to stitch it and finish these boxes for everyone. This I think was part of one of Holly's gifts or somebody else's gift, but, um, eh, it's got a tray in it. It's got body and Camille fabric in it. It's got chickens in it. Vintage. Can you believe it? Um, totally, totally thoughtful. And I can't believe she made one for everyone. So I have in here, I already have in here some, a notebook. Look at Tammy. Give us, listen, have you ever heard of black wing? I think I've talked about them before. Black wing pencils. And they have a little notebook so I don't get, so it, in theory, I know what I'm doing more often because I'm taking notes. <laughs> she included some stickers. She uses this. Hey, I, listen, I'm not a huge sticker person, but let me tell you about this real fast. Also, if you want to see a still shot of this, uh, I'll, maybe I'll put it at the end. She uses this girl's call. She's called Indiana Inker Plans. And she has all sorts of cool stickers. Like she gave us each a retreat sheet and like a started project. Like awesome. So Tammy had given, gifted us those. She had gifted us. Let me see. Just let me go through my stack. <laughs> this floss ring. Isn't it pretty? And she had made the other floss ring, I'm pretty sure. And then Missy taught us how to make floss rings. Hold on. First, let me tell you what else Tammy gifted us. Look, she made us these little pin cushions. She gave us a book. She gave us a nonfiction devotional. And then she gave us a fictional book about sewing. She <laughs> So we can have a book club. And um, she gifted us all of these little prizes. Each of them were so thoughtful. Um, Holly had arranged for the, the custom pattern. The we dyed silks, we dyed custom silks, like chemistry and stuff. Um, <coughs> she had Shelly Fry come so we can meet her and stitch with her one day or something else. Oh, we had this little goodie bag from France, all these sweet little French things, an apron and a little tote bag and some floss and a pin cushion, a little French pin cushion. Sanju. So sweet. She also gifted us, look at this. It's got beeswax. And it came with refills. So you know how when you get stuff like that and you don't want to use it up? You actually could. Because there's refills available. I don't know where you get them. Let me see if it says. Oh, it looks like there's directions. But beautiful. Beautiful and thoughtful. Beautiful scissors. Little pouches. Little, little everything. Missy had gifted us. Let me see if I can get this. She had gifted us a custom, a tote bag. Like, like a customized to us floss ring. This one has a little charm from Maine. Maybe she, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she had kitted this up for us, not with fabric, but the floss, the friendship tree, the Shakespeare pedal, Shakespeare's peddler. And then she even made a Shakespeare, the same friendship tree floss ring. Isn't that beautiful? So thoughtful. That's what I mean. Every little thing was thoughtful. 
Kathy had made us, had these made for us, the Petite Retreat Needle Minder. And her daughter, Ashley, had made us a tumbler. And it, col it changes color, temperature-wise. And it also has this cool trap door. Listen, what world am I buying my tumblers? <laughs> because, like, if your star comes out, it seals shut so it won't leak. So I thought that was amazing. And then Missy had also gifted us these little personalized jewelry boxes. And then we had a, a, a workshop to, <laughs> to customize them. So on the inside, they're cute. This was it. Shelly brought us little gift bags and they had some silk floss, some of her floss drops, a little tiny tomato pin cushion and some, some mints. It was sweet. And she was wonderful. And then Missy also, Missy also taught us how to make these. And boy, if you don't, if you don't expect one from me, if you're at my table from now on, just <laughs> brace your, your expectations. So we had a night where we worked on finish making these. She had brought all the supplies and scrapbook paper so that we could learn how to make them. Aren't they cute? Tammy had some leftover stuff too, so it made it extra fun because there was all these different shapes and stickers and this is really sweet. Isn't that fun? I can make anything now. And okay, so, so all of these wonderful thought out little, little things. And then yesterday I got the mail and I got my, my silks because they had had to dry for a couple of days and I went home. So they sent me my, my silk and inside those lookers had also got me a bunch of goodies at SitchCon. They got me this pattern set for the patriotic parade. So there's the tractor. Chicks on Parade. I'm sorry. I was reading it. Uh, Patriot Reigns. You little firecracker. <laughs> Moo, they're of freedom. <laughs> and Uncle Ham. <laughs> they're really cute. We used to jump together. Isn't that cute? And so they surprised me with that. And... Uh, wax pig, which I thought was cute. I got it the same day I went to pick up our, our pig for our freezer. <laughs> Meat. And then a big hunk of fabric. This is Forbidden Fabric Glass Elevator. Beautiful. Beautiful. And a floss ring. And floss drops with the rooster. Isn't that pretty? I don't know if you can see. There you go. <sighs> see why I'm overwhelmed? That's a lot, right? So. The, my haul. <laughs> I stopped at two major needle workshops I had never visited before. I did damage. It was like winter is coming. You'll never be able to shop again type of shopping. And so, uh, sorry, I was saying no. First I went to Riverview and Laura was there. I, I bought a lot of patterns. At Riverview, they're ordering in a lot of the blackbirds that have been discontinued that have been reprinted. So they had a ton. I bought a ton. And then I bought a bunch of Laura's fabric. So they were telling me about their fabric and their fabric of the month club. Also, did you know that they are having a retreat in November? I don't know if I can go. I'm going to stitch with some friends the weekend prior. And I don't think I can be gone two weekends in a row. And then the next weekend is probably darn near a holiday. This is Cauldron Spill. This, this one and this one, Swamp Monster, Monster, are one of their best sellers. So this is actually a 28 count linen and I can see the holes and it it's a very nice fabric it's very soft so even though I'm not a fan of linen you know I think that I can probably do this just fine 
and you know I'm going to always be an Ada girl. So. But there's nothing wrong with trying something else and challenging myself. This is this, the Cauldron Monster. She said this one comes out so different every batch, but it's amazing. She does amazing stuff. She has a fabric club. I'm th thinking about it. And then I bought, now I think that she told me this was linen, but I think it, I think it looks like you even weave. So this is a Zweigart. They had the green dots, the blue dots. I think it is a linen. You can see the slubs, flubs, whatever. And then the white. So pretty. So I got those at Riverview. And then I was just showered on with all of these amazing trinkets and tools and gifts and knowledge. And then I went to the craft gallery. We all went together this time, so I could feel like I could blame some of it on peer pressure. I'm not going to show any of the patterns I bought. You know why? Because I think I bought 50. 50. It's obnoxious. It was like a collecting moment. <laughs> There's a lot of patterns I never seen online. I wouldn't remember the name of it to shop for it online. And since I've gotten home, I've looked up a couple of them and I can't find them. So lucky me. <laughs> so I bought a commitment when I was there about the craft gallery floss organizer project thingy. I have one of these from keepsakes too. So it's like a collector's item. And then I bought a lot of fabric. This is a 16 count vanilla latte. I think this is fiber on a whim, isn't it? I think it is. Like I can feel it. But I didn't have that one. I had, I don't know, you guys. <laughs> this is De Bloom. Who makes this? Not all of these have it. That's a forbidden fiber. This is De Bloom. And I will tell you that I've seen how many people sh show De Bloom on floss tube and it, it's just something about my personality I need to see it in real life to see see what it really looks like I'm like I think this looks perfect on screen like yeah that's very true to, true to real life but I want to see it in real life <laughs> so this is 16 count ale I think this is very amazing beautiful fabric Uh, this is Regency. And this is Leaf Pile. Isn't this beautiful? Woo! So, that is some of my haul. That is some of my stitchy kindness. It's not all of it. I couldn't, I couldn't stuff it in here if I tried. I did try. I can do it. You guys just have to accept that I got a lot. <laughs> and I had a I had a wonderful trip. If you ever find your little group of people, try organizing a get together and just see what happens. It's amazing. It really is. Um also I didn't organize anything, I just showed up. <laughs> I did have time to make project bags for each of them and they were patchwork and I used foam which was a new experience but um I don't know still I did minimal work I just showed up and had a great time <laughs> it's great <laughs> so that's all I have I've told you my plans I'll check in if there's anything going on I'm assuming I'm gonna be stitching on that vintage housewife for the foreseeable future. Follow me on Instagram if you want to keep up. Um, I'm an over-sharer over there, so I share way too much. I did an unofficial garden tour <laughs> last week. It's in a highlight bubble if you want to see my garden. It wasn't looking so hot. It was a week ago. Things have really improved. I should probably do a new one. But um, I do overshare over there. There's lots of, lots of pictures and video of Ellie, lots of pictures of the animals and the cats and the dogs. <laughs> So, um, that's all. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much if you've subscribed and when you comment and I, I, I think that I still have a trouble accepting the kindness. It's overwhelming and humbling. And I appreciate every single one of you that stops in to watch 
and check in on what I'm doing and suggest help. I appreciate you. <laughs> you know I need help. Um, I, just, I just appreciate all of you and I value all of the time that you spend with me and thank you for hanging in there when I don't show up <laughs> because I'm busy. But um, I should be, uh, I should check in sooner rather than later. I don't think it'll be three weeks, maybe though. Depending on how boring my stitching is. <laughs> but um, I hope that you're having a wonderful summer and you're getting a lot of stitching in and your garden's growing lush and huge and everything's good for you. And um, thank you so much for stopping in, friends. Uh, happy stitching. Bye-bye.